Hi, welcome to EC&M Ask video. And this is just a series of uh, short and sweet videos where we go through and we answer questions uh, from our readers and, and premium content subscribers and so forth uh, from webinars that we put on and, and these other Ask videos and articles and whatnot. So anyway, I'm uh, Randy Barnett and I'll try and answer a few questions for us today. Uh, my background is journeyman electrician, program manager for NTT training for electrical codes and safety groups. So I do a lot of electrical codes and safety uh, training and writing and videos like this and so forth. So anyway, my first question is on reconditioned equipment in the NEC. And it's kind of a lengthy question, but basically this person is asking, uh, what is this reconditioned equipment and, and what are the changes in the NEC and how does it apply to me and so forth? So anyway, let's start, I suppose, first of all, it's been expanded in the 2023 edition of the NEC. And now, just like it tells us in the NEC, unless I specify which particular edition we're talking about, we're always going to talk about the most recent edition. So I've got the uh, 2023 in front of me here. So let's begin with what is reconditioned equipment? And we've seen this before in the code, but we'll go back. There's a definition in Article 100. So let's first take a look at this definition. Uh, reconditioned equipment in Article 100. It says electrical mechanical systems, equipment, apparatus, or components that are restored to operating condition. This process differs from normal servicing and maintenance. So this is special. We've got a piece of equipment, low voltage power circuit breaker, whatever. We need to bring it in, uh, recondition it, make it, make it, as good as it used to be, as best we can, right? It even tells us down here in an informational note, uh, recondition, some other terms we might be more familiar with. It says the term recondition is frequently referred to as rebuilt, refurbished, or remanufactured. So maybe that gives us a better idea. Now, for the 2023 edition of the NEC, there's been a new section added, 110.20 and it's strictly on reconditioned equipment. So we wanna go over that section a little bit because it has, it tells us what to do, what we can do with this reconditioned equipment. Then we wanna talk about what we can recondition and what we can't maybe. So 110.20 uh, uh, is divided into three subsections and here's what it tells us. Let's just take a look at it. It says reconditioned equipment shall be permitted except where prohibited elsewhere. That's the first thing. So in other words, unless there's something in the code that says, no, you can't, you can't uh, uh, recondition that, you know, uh, molded case circuit breaker, then, uh, well, it's a low voltage power circuit breaker. Yeah, we can recondition that. So that's important to understand then before we get into all the uh, nitty gritty. Oh, and by the way, if you want to always go to the index in the NEC, and I know it's big and it's not... You know, it takes a little bit to find something there, but it'll go through reconditioned equipment or it has reconditioned equipment. And then it lists several items, just what we're talking about today. So you can always find this information in the index then. Uh, it gives us three options. It says, well, it says that we're gonna have to use the original uh, manufacturer, the OEM original equipment manufacturers parts in order to recondition our equipment. and. That's fine. So we're going to use these identified parts from the OEM. But what if we can't get those? What if we don't have those? Here's what it tells us. It says that uh, we have to use parts that are designed by an engineer experienced in the design of replacement parts for the type of equipment being reconditioned. Wow, you're going to have to digest that one a little bit and, and take a look at what you're going to do when you can't get those identified parts from the OEM. Now, we have equipment that's listed, of course, and we have equipment that's not required to be listed. And so that's important when it comes to reconditioning, because if you think about it, if I'm going to recondition a piece of equipment, a motor, a low voltage power circuit breaker, something like that, I'm going to, I'm going to lose that original listing, right? Because I'm changing stuff out. I'm changing parts and so forth. So it gives me three options in 110.20. It says, uh, first of all, equipment that's required to be listed. So if it's required to be listed, it says that um, 
it has to be either listed or field labeled as reconditioned. Okay, so I get it listed again or get it field labeled as that it's been reconditioned. Now, equipment that's not required to be labeled, it says I have to comply with one of the following. It can be listed again or listed and then uh, our field labeled as reconditioned. Maybe those aren't, you know, that's not always the best option for me. It says I can have the reconditioning performed in accordance with the original equipment manufacturer's instructions. So basically I've seen requirements for listed equipment and for equipment that's not required to be listed when it comes to reconditioning. What if none of that works for me? It's old equipment, I'm reconditioning it. I don't have the OEM instructions or anything like that anymore. Um, I don't have a, a you know a team of design engineers standing by to, to, uh, uh, to redesign parts for me and so forth. So it gives me a third option in 110.20. And it's called approved equipment. Here's what it says. If you can't meet any of those two previous requirements we just talked about, it said it's permitted to be approved as reconditioned equipment. Uh, as, and of course, we know approved is what? Acceptable to the authority having jurisdiction. So if the AHJ says it's approved and you provide them the documentation that, that you use to recondition that equipment and parts that you use and so forth, then the AHJ can go ahead and approve that as reconditioned equipment. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, it's 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 gotten a lot deeper, hasn't it? Okay, we've gotten a lot more involved when it comes to reconditioning. A couple other quick things. Marking requirements are covered in 110.21. If it's no longer listed because I'm reconditioning, I recondition that equipment, I need to go through and uh, somehow get rid of that original UL marking. It tells me don't remove the nameplate. Just get something like you and I would say a Sharpie or whatever and a permanent marker and go over that UL listing and make sure that it's obviously uh, not UL listed anymore. Okay? Now, the dot two sections in the code, throughout the code, we know those all those dot two sections, it used to be definitions, it's not anymore. Definitions have been moved to article 100. Now dot two is being used for reconditioned equipment. And that's where you'll find all the specifics on your reconditioned equipment. So. You want to go back to the index once again, uh, take a look under reconditioned equipment, and you'll find a list of all of the, what is it, four or five articles there that tell me where I cannot recondition, what types of equipment I cannot, I'm prohibited from reconditioning. Molded case circuit breakers, GFCIs, ground fault protection equipment, liquidized flexible metal conduit I can't recondition and so on. So anyway, that information is available to you in the index. Always check your dot two sections and don't forget 110.20 and 110.21 on reconditioned equipment. Okay. Well, uh, we got to keep this short and sweet. So anyway, that's all we've got on reconditioned equipment right now. Uh, we thank you for listening in. Hope you got a little bit of information that might help you out there in the field. Remember this ECNM Ask video is brought to you by ECNM Magazine and they're part of the Endeavor portfolio of business publications. So until next time, work safe.